In chemistry, one of the most important topics we cover is intermolecular forces. What holds molecules together? And what consequences does that have? Well, I think one of the most spectacular consequences is soap films. And that is that hydrogen bonding, the attraction between water molecules, causes soap films, that is what soapy water is mostly made of, it's got water in the middle and soap on the edges like this, like a sandwich, causes soap films to be as small as possible. So if I take a given frame, this is pretty simple right here, and dip it into, this is just some soapy water, Dawn is what I like to use, about a 5 to 10 percent solution. Um, the film that forms on this is a nice flat one because that's, whoop, that's what covers this frame with the least amount of material possible, okay? Flat frame. If I take something quite a bit more elaborate than that and say, what would cover this frame with the least amount of surface area, the least amount of material, that becomes a much trickier problem. You could actually solve that mathematically using high-speed computers. It would take probably several weeks to solve entering each of these points of this weird shape into a three-dimensional matrix or whatever and solving that problem. It would be able to give you the answer, but soap films do it in an instant. That is the solution to how to cover that particular frame with the least amount of material. So, soap films, because of hydrogen bonding, want to be as small as possible. Here's an interesting arrangement. It's a helix with a rod down the middle and a string connected loosely to the helix and to the rod. I'm going to dip this in there, see if we can't get a good shot of that. Okay, you get a nice little, looks like one of those spiral uh, driveways or whatever that you have at a parking garage. I'm going to pop part of it, but this part's still down here, so watch what happens as I zip the film up. Oop, it just popped. Let me reestablish that. Zip it all the way up to the top, and then zip it back down. Again, the soap film always covering with the least amount of material there. Kind of remarkable that that tiny little film there, that little sandwich of water molecules between layers of soapy molecules can be extended out to such a fine film as that, okay? Here's a nice one. <laughs> this seems simple enough. And this, by the way, was made from a soda bottle. I cut out the middle section and then I trimmed this part down just a little bit so it fits inside the lower one. I'll scoop up a little bit of soapy water here. And now my question is this. What do you think the soap film will look like? I'll set this down on the table. As I lift this straight up, well, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, so it would make sense that as I lift it up, every point to every point down here would be a straight line. It would just form a cylinder. Well, that might make sense at first, but soap films always give you the right answer. Let me do that again. It turns out that the best solution is one that pinches off in the middle, that hourglass shape. Whoop. Went too far with it. That hourglass shape is what uh, is the best way to cover it. Okay? Now, if I add this stipulation, I'm going to add a little pressure to it, to the center here. I can, and then cap it so that air is trapped inside there, I can generate a nice cylindrical soap film. It turns out that if I try to stretch it too much, it tends to form like a bowling pin arrangement there and eventually pinches off. This might seem kind of new, but it's actually, it actually was all written up, every one of these so far was written up in a book written by C.V. Boys over 120 years ago. He did all these demonstrations. He wasn't using a cut up soda bottle, obviously, but This one's been nicknamed the hula bubble because it's got this nice little hula dance going on there. But uh, if I let the air out, it automatically pinches off. Recognize this? <laughs> That's right, good old USA with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight major cities. Can you name them all? Hmm. Well, <laughs> we got New York, we got Atlanta, and a couple others. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Question, if you had to connect these eight cities with 
pipelines or communication lines or roads using the least amount of linear distance, how to do it? Well, this will solve it because I made a sandwich between these and made those little rods between them. So this is a way of solving that problem. Right away, you have to jiggle it a bit there. There we go. That gives you the best solution for how to connect those cities using the least amount of total roadway or communication lines. And if you want to leave out one of the cities, say forget this one, just pop that one, and now it adjusts the answer to give you the best new answer. Okay? So soap films can be used for answering some questions that pertain to, again, minimal surface area. Have a few more fun ones here. <laughs> this one, to get a little straw here for. That's what I want. Okay, brand new. This, by the way, is the spiral that I took out of a spiral notebook, a plastic spiral that came out, just unthreaded it, so it's. Um, and if I'm going to dip that in the soapy water, lift it out slowly here. It's got a soap film covering it, like a little cylinder. I've got a little thing at the bottom I'm going to pop to get rid of it. Oop, I didn't want to do that. That is kind of neat, though. You saw the soap film pop. I'll show that again. That wasn't what I'm going after here. In fact, I'll just do that right now so you can watch the soap film pop. Okay, you don't often get a chance to see a soap film as it pops. But what I want to do is pop the little film that's across the bottom that forms for this demonstration. Let me see if this little, there, okay. And now, hook it up here. I'm going to take and blow the tiniest little bubble here, the bottom, okay? And now I'm going to pop the film below it. And you're watching that little bubble race up to the top as the soap film, again, gets as small as possible. Did that show up well? Okay. So, kind of remarkable one there. Um, this one is kind of temperamental, but hey, I'm feeling lucky. And we saw this one before, my little flat soap film, and oh, this one popped here. Let me do that again. It's the bubble trampoline. <laughs> there we go. In C.V. Boys' book, he talks about the fact that these soap films aren't even really coming in contact with each other. There's electrostatic charges that are keeping them from ever even touching. Um, if they do, they usually tend to fuse together, and that happens sometimes with that. But uh, this last one I've got, oh, there it is, <laughs> is going to involve a balloon, and I usually have a volunteer come up that I rub their hair with this, but uh, I found this little wool patch on this glove works probably just as well. So, wouldn't want to give anyone a bad hair day anyway, so. I'm going to charge up the balloon. See if I can't. get the bubble to levitate just to the right spot there. Whoop. So that's a nice little illustration, by the way, of Millikan's oil drop experiment in which he adjusted electric field between two plates and caused oil droplets to just hover in place. And from that was able to deduce the charge of a single electron. The reason that was working, by the way, was because water is quite attracted by a static charge like that. You can deflect a stream of water by a charged balloon or a comb or something like that. And it's much more impressive, I think, with a bubble, though. Anyway, those were all some wonderful demonstrations that show intermolecular forces 
through soap films.